welcome back. And if it's your first time here, just welcome. I want to start with a question. Do you think your photography would be better if you bought a new lens? Come on, let's see a show of hands. Quite a few of you. Well, your photography might get better if you bought a new lens, but it would definitely get better if you bought a flash gun, which is why today I'm going to show you how to take pictures like this and this and this and this and all with nothing more expensive than a standard DSLR and you can use any camera with a hot shoe, a standard kit lens and a few inexpensive accessories such as a flash gun or two or even three. But a bit of housekeeping first. Remember, if you like this video, smash me a like, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see when my next videos are coming out and don't forget the bell because I really do appreciate it. And so back to it. Flash guns are awesome. The trouble is, camera manufacturers want you to put them in the worst possible place. Flashes mounted on the hot shoe, on top of the camera, produce really awful, uninteresting light. The pictures you get just taking a camera and flash gun like that are just terrible. So what we need to do is find a way of getting the flash gun to fire when it's off the camera. And then you can move the light wherever you want so you get much more interesting images. Now the pictures I've just shown you and many more on my website were all taken with off camera flash. The trouble is my gear and I tend to end up in situations where carrying expensive gear around or an, an army of assistants to help me just isn't viable. So I need easily replaceable, inexpensive, yet reliable gear. So if you're a photographer on a budget, know that getting great shots is not all about how much money you spend. So on boats or in the jungle, working alone, I often use one camera, a short zoom lens, and an off-camera flash to get all the images that I really need. Now you can buy the manufacturer's own flash guns. Uh, Nikon make them, Canon make them, all the other makes make them. And they'll sit on the camera and they'll talk on a DNA level with the circuitry inside the camera and do all sorts of things. Now they tend to be quite expensive and I worry that if I break one, that's an awful lot coming out of my bank balance and trying to struggle to get another one in the field. So I use less expensive third party ones. But over the years I've had numerous makes, but I've settled on these Yongunu flash guns and these, the ones I've got at the moment are the YN 560 Mark II. I've got a couple of them. I also have a rather knackered old Nikon SB800, uh, which has got a damaged LCD screen, as you can see, but it still works. This is not an advert for Yongunu. I'm not paid by them. They haven't supplied me with any flash guns. I bought these things years ago. I just find them affordable and reliable. Now, before we go any further, I think an introduction is in order. Now, I don't normally go around scaring runners like that, but this is my friend Kate. And Kate is going to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Kate. I live in Weymouth and I am a sports therapist. She also has a really good Instagram feed, so if you want to check that out, that's it down below. Uh, I'll also leave the link in the description box down below. So, I'm going to be photographing Kate running with the flash gun setup that I was mentioning in the intro, and we're going to go over the other side where it's less road noise, less everything else, apart from it's blooming windy, which is why I'm down next to this wall sheltering out the wind. So you're going to see me taking the pictures, I'll film everything that I do, but I'm going to have to do a voiceover because the wind sound is just going to be too bad to make anything legible uh, coming out of my mouth, which is probably a good thing. So let's get over there. So the wind noise killed the sound and almost my recording camera. So I'll be your guide through the film. So let's start with how you take one flash off one camera. What you need is a flash trigger. Now this, and again, not sponsored by Yungunu because I bought these, this is the Yungunu 603 Mark II. And you might have seen it in my video about how to take pictures of yourself when you haven't got any friends. Because this is a remote trigger, but it's also a flash trigger. So you need two as before. You need them to be set on the same frequency because there's a little radio frequency in there. And then one goes onto 
the camera, screw that up. The other goes onto the flash gun, screw that up. Make sure the flash gun is turned on. Now I've got this set to the minimum amount so it doesn't blind you. Turn the camera on. The flash gun, this one, needs to be set to TRX. The camera needs to be set to TX. And then I'll just press the, the shutter release and there you go. You get instant firing of the camera. So how can we make this work brilliantly outside? The way I do this is I set one flash gun on a tripod or a table or wherever I happen to be, somewhere that's perched so it can be fired at the subject. In this case, we're out on a beach. Windy as hell, so I positioned the flash gun next to where the, I want the runner to be photographed. Because when it comes to these little flash guns, you don't get too many flashes, so you can't just start blatting away hoping that you'll get the runner in the right place at one point in those row of 5, 10, 15 shots. So it's got to be done precisely on time, which is why if you look to see where the runner's running, just where her foot hits, there's a little patch of green. And that is what I decided is when I was going to take the picture is when her foot was directly over that little patch of greenery. And I made sure, or I asked her, to make sure her foot hit that thing every single time. It doesn't work every time, which is why we have to do the shot over and over again. But most of the time, she got it right. Then the flash gun needs to be positioned to the side, looking slightly at her. Now you can mount these on lighting stands. If you've got some lighting stands, you can do that. But when you're outside and the wind is howling, and remember, the wind was howling. When you get lighting stands, they're a little bit not very stable. You can put sandbags and all that sort of stuff on the bottom, and if you want to cart all that stuff out to a beach, be my guest. But if you've got a tripod, just stick it on top there. You can get little feet that go onto the bottom here, which uh, you'll see in the video. That just screws into the tripod bush, and you've got a nice, perfectly mounted uh, flash gun. So that's the flash in position. When it comes to the exposure, I like to make sure the ambient light is slightly darker than what I want flash light to be. So I'm exposing for the flash, so there's no blown highlights, but I want the subject to stand out against the background. So I firstly set the ambient exposure to either one or two stops under what the camera's telling me. So as you can see, nice dramatic sky in this image. The clouds are nicely rolling in, so there's beautiful texture on the underside of the clouds, which is perfect for this type of shot. If the sun was out, we'd be struggling with the power output from these flash guns because I'm on one, I'm on full power from each of these guns. Now I know my flash gun, so I know that it's perfect in these conditions. So I take a couple of shots and just dial it down until I get the absolute right exposure. I get the model to stand exactly where I want her to be when the flash goes off so I know where the light's going, how the light's going to act and also what the exposure is going to be. Once all that's set up then I can start getting her to do the running which is why when it's blowing a gale and the wind chill was probably around about zero if not even less I got her to wear a coat while I was doing all the setup. Coat comes off then we start doing the running. The first time we do the shot we're almost there, second time, almost again, third time, we're getting there, I do another couple of shots, just so I then make sure that I've got the image that I really want. So that's one flash. I keep the same exposure for the two flash shot. I then use a tripod and set my other flash gun up, but this one is set to slave mode which is why when you're looking at buying a second flash gun, if you are going to look for a second flash gun, make sure it can slave off the first one. Basically all that means is that the, this flash gun detects the light from this flash gun and fires. So you can then have flash guns either side controlling to get a bit more even light. So this one doesn't need 
a radio trigger, it just needs to have the slave mode. And as you can see, when I put those two together, I then get her to stand in exactly the same place again, and I didn't just balance the light with the second flash gun. And you'll notice the position of the flash guns. Some, some fashion photographers tend to put the light up high looking down. So it lights on the face and then you get light fall off as it get, travels down the body. When it comes to sports photography or normal portrait photography, I like to have the lights a lot further down so we're facing straight into the subject. Whatever it is, I like to have the light going straight onto it so it's evenly lit. So once everything's then again balanced up, so we've got a nice dark background, we've got a nice light subject, I then get it to start running again. This is the only way this poor girl can keep warm because it's absolutely freezing as you can see. So every time I take a shot, I check it. If I'm happy, I zoom in, make sure it's in focus. If I'm happy with a facial expression, if I'm happy with the position of the legs, then we move on. If it was a warm day, I would just keep going and going and going until I got five or six, seven, eight shots that I really like. Because it was so cold, I just did. As soon as I'm happy, we move on to the next shot. So the next job that I wanted to show you is how to do it with three flashes. So we've got the two at the front and then a backlight from behind. And that's where my backup, 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 backup flash gun comes in. Now this one hasn't got slave, so, or if it has, I can't get it to work anymore because the, uh, the LCD's gone. So I take the trigger off of this one, set that to slave, so now my two front lights are both slave lights. And they're running on this one, which is going to be set at the back, looking towards me and the model, with the flash guns at the front looking from me towards the model. So the light from this will trigger these ones. I don't have any choice with this, it's just full power. But the good thing is, it's round about the similar sort of power to that. So I can position this nearer or further away. Now I'm making sure this one is actually on my Gorillapod, which I happen to be filming on so I can't show you. But that's positioned on the ground behind the model. Now the tricky part is not balancing the exposure because all it's going to do is create a key light. She's blocking most of the light coming from this. So that's not a problem. The problem is making sure when she's in the right position, this is blocked. Because as you'll see, as you start taking shots, her leg will be slightly in the wrong position or her body will be slightly in the wrong position and you'll see the light and it will ruin the shot. So timing and position are critical. And I did a few shots and we managed to get it. So the sun was setting behind us and I wanted to get a decent shot with the sunset in the distance, the nice rolling clouds and her running. We were both freezing cold by this point uh, and trying to get that right was just too difficult. We tried, but it's a lot trickier with the three lights and if you've got a nice calm warm day and everything's nice and calm it's quite easy to do in fact you can do it on a static shot as we did here and you'll see just that little key line around her which is a lot easier to produce when you're doing the running and you're in you're fighting the element it was just too difficult so i just removed that from the equation and we went back to the two lights and we managed to get a really nice image with the sunset with two lights her looking great um, everything was in focus and we managed to really get a lovely, lovely shot, I think you'll agree. So that's how I get off-camera flash to get more drama into an image. It works brilliantly with action shots, it works brilliantly with reportage or portraits, it even works great in some landscape situations where you just need to add a little bit of light into the foreground, but you don't want to just stick that flat light on top of the camera. So I would buy a new flash gun over a new lens any day. It provides way more bang for your buck. It's pretty easy to do, and it really makes your images stand out from the crowd. So, give it a go. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out.